All right, let me know when. Right now. Everybody, welcome back to Horseplay. This is Obi One X Two right here, along with right next to me, Yogi Zilla. Let me make sure I got yo, yo. my camera right over there. Hey guys, what's going on? We are here. We are live. It is Thursday, and I gotta turn the music down a little bit because um, once again, I basically that it's gonna go. This Thursday, <laughs> it did. It went right to, right off. But welcome back, guys. This is Horse Played. It is Thursday, and I'm gonna say this 16 more times until I get the date. April 3rd, 2014. And yes, the date is right time. I checked that before the show started, because remember last week. I uh, know. I'm sorry. Yeah. If my my head looks kind of funny today, guys, my headphones are actually broken right here so i'm just trying to you know i actually had a, i actually had a thing that i was gonna get some duct tape but i figured that'd be kind of you ghetto back in episode 16 titled april fools and immersions versus realism i think i have it in the on the screen here a little bit he he actually just changed it up if you guys don't believe me but i have april <laughs> fools and realism versus immersism that word immersion oh, yeah sorry I did, I did i did change it but i changed it several minutes ago but anyway we're we're we're, we're just we're just gonna have fun guys it's, it's that's all we're gonna have we're gonna have fun <laughs> i done this i done left everything but what like i said before guys i am joined by yogi zilla um and what's up man so <laughs> you're supposed to say that word right there. That Where one. are we supposed to start? That one. You're supposed to yeah, wasabi. <laughs> well, you gotta switch it up a little bit. I don't want us to be scripted, you know? Well, yeah, I, I want to be robots. I want the intro to be somewhat scripted because then I'll forget to sh say shit. So <laughs> it's gotta be a little bit. If the intro's gonna be scripted and we need to find something that's like we could coin you know, mm -hmm. like uh, kind of like Sean Freeman does in Zombie Cast. Like he's got like a little trademark opening. The same thing he does in Knuckleballer. He just has a way, certain way of opening up. We'll get there. Well, no, and, and, I'm, but, uh, and I'm writing. I'm actually, dude, got me. I actually, instead of getting on my computer and just having like several different notepads open, I've actually got on it and I went old school. <laughs> Pen and paper. Actually older than that. Pencil and paper. And you know what? I even went out and looked out for a freaking flat stone with a pick, a chisel deal. Okay. <laughs> to write this shit down. Just so I don't forget. You what know, are you writing the Ten Commandments clink, over clink, again? Clink, 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 clink. clink. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, if that helps. No, not the well, Ten Commandments. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I'm going to ask you uh, did you watch the Walking Dead season finale yet? Season four? No. No. That's a no. I already know. Hanging his head in shame. All I'm going to say is those last two episodes, uh, 15 and 16, if I'm not mistaken, amazing. Probably the best episodes they've made yet. So, and, and you've got time to catch up because now they show's on a hiatus for however long it's going to be. Uh, but wow. And uh, a lot of the predictions we talked about on episode 10 and 11, if I'm not mistaken, or was it 11 and 12? I forget. Our zombie talk series. 
a lot of the stuff that we predicted along with Matt Bradford and Normie and uh, Sean Freeman starting to come true. So don't you love things it? Things are unveiling. Just come true. And you just like, you're like, Hey, I said that was going to happen. And it happened. Kind of like how I treated yep. my wife the first time she started watching it. And I had already been like <laughs> 10, 15 episodes into it. He's like, All right, how many episodes have you watched? Three. Honey. <laughs> Well, it's good when when uh, it's good when the show or even the video game, anything story driven, when you can like uh, read it or watch it or listen to it, and you can start making your own conclusions. So long as they still make you second guess yourself a little bit and think about the realm of possibilities, you know, because you don't want it to be so predictable when it's like ah, so obvious, you know. You don't want it to be cliche either. But this was de- this definitely threw balls, or as Sean would say, some knuckle balls well, at you. And- it's, it's good. And what I was uh, thinking about earlier is when I told was talking to my wife about it, I was you know, saying it's so predictable already that I can tell what's going to happen in <laughs> season. And the only thing I could say to her is, "No, you don't," because she was saying, "Oh, this should happen. This should happen. This should happen. Oh, he should get killed off." You know, being um, what is name again? The badass crossbow. Just thinking, you know, how oh, he needs to be killed off right off the bat. We 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 don't need to get into this. <laughs> Seriously. Well, you know, I just figured I'd at least so mention to talk about it. today. <laughs> Funny. You know, I I figured it's gonna be on people's minds. It's it's, it's the kind of episode. I mean, the last two episodes definitely leave an impression. So mm-hmm. maybe we'll talk about an upcoming episode when everybody's caught up. Maybe we have some call-ins, but keeping yeah. it back. You know what? I will get on the WCW. Is that where it's at, right? The show, the, the, the network? On. Yeah. A, uh, AMC. I think it's the okay. only thing I could really think of that's on AMC. Yeah. Huh. Well, then I will get online and I will check it out and see if I can't get those uh, last couple episodes. Because if I don't TiVo them, or not, not TiVo, but if I don't um, DVR them, then I won't, I won't look for another showing of it. Because... Well, I'm watch it the same day, or I'm just gonna look online the next day after because they got an episode. R- rumors on the street is that there's a uh, site called Couch Tuner. Um, I don't, I haven't verified this myself, but I hear you can, uh, you can become a a um, a sailor of the Caribbean, and ex- and explore, explore the seven seas of uh of television. So, just saying. <laughs> Two thumbs up. <laughs> Check a pose. Yeah, well, if you guys that are you guys that are actually listening to the podcast, I'm just sitting here popping up with two thumbs up every two seconds, saying that I, you know, I've I've tried it. I do approve of that. <laughs> <laughs> we both do it, guys, and everybody that watches it because we both cut each other off. We are the worst two hosts for each other <laughs> ever, but it works. It's horseplay, guys. <laughs> um, but we do want to give a couple shout-outs to some of our friends out there. And um, we want to make sure the uh, – I don't – did you want to do this, Yoga? I was just going to keep going with it. Shout-outs to the Googry yep. born from the party chat, Tim Curtis Jr. Is this – Oh, and the Goog says he's no longer the Goog. Now he's, he's just Ryan. Oh. He's Ryan Nexus on Twitch. And he start, he's going to start streaming, so we, we're going to take him under our wings and, and, and groom him for the experience. Yep, definitely. He's doing some Skyrim uh, mods and stuff. Definitely. Okay. Well, the Goog Reborn, formerly known, is now Ryan. That's, yes. That's, that's it. <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from the party chat, Tim Curtis Jr., of course. We love you, buddy. Always. Uh, okay, you got to say the next name. It's it's SG. it's Bridget. I know I know who it is. It's SG and Bridget. Yes. From Damn it. Lovely lovely you... couple and the lovely host <laughs> of the R9 cast. Yes, I will get to know all you guys. Sorry. Do you think about this guys that you know, one week I'm sitting here saying this is just going to be something that I'm doing with one of my friends that we have fun and we get to just talk. Just BS all the time. To to getting text, I mean multiple texts on, hey, dude, we need to do this, 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 and this. 
Oh yeah, and by the way, while you're doing that 400 things, you need to do this 400 things as well. Just so we can, and then on top of that, I want you to join all these different networks and then you gotta be involved in every one of them. <laughs> so, when you get a guy like me, okay, and I'm just a gamer, I'm not a hardcore networker, I'm not a internet, I'm not a computer guy by any means. You get a guy like me that just wants to, that jumped into, I have total faith in my partner with me. You guys know him, Yogi. Uh, that's not the issue. Jump into somebody like me where you just play the video games, not really involved in community. You know, you say something every now and then, but all of a sudden I have to be involved and not have to be, I want to be involved. Today I was listening to the B-Team podcast right before this one started, and I'm thinking they're going to go off and, you know, they're going to have a good topic. Oh, my God, I wish I would have been in that call. <laughs> when we get back to the, are... when we get back to a console, um, and I'll just say this and we'll, we'll move forward. When we get back to a console talk, uh, when we're back on the Xbox and play, or you guys will hear my final verdict. <laughs> the final verdict from Obi, you will hear that. But we want to get out some more Norma Late, of course, Normie 477, and uh, of course, Sean Freeman Pimp Daddy, of course. Got Matt Bradford, or like I like to call him, Motto. Motto. Hello, Moto. <laughs> Chipsella, Fred Rojas, Dark Risings, King Beam. Did I say that right? Yogi? Yep, yep. And, okay, I'm not going to say that last one. I am. I'm not even going to mess up. King one? Deem Asmodeus. That one right there. And all our friends at allgames.com. You guys are looking just for an interesting chat. Go check those guys out. I was in there for like 10 minutes this morning. Even this morning. Oh, my goodness. It was uh, pretty pretty interesting. We really appreciate all all the help from everybody and we want a little special uh special thank you and, and props to uh a couple clans that myself and and you play with of course yogi's clans nof and i'm gonna say it just because i like saying the word nipples of fate and of course mine right down here below me first uh regiment for the uh the armor too guys go ahead and get those uh two clans a a, a look see um, we are on engine. I don't know exactly where Yogi is. I'm sure he's going to say it here in about half a second. About what? <laughs> Where's your clan located? Do oh, uh, we have n-o-f.com. You heard Now, it. I was just stuck on the fact that you you said your clan name, and I swear I sounded like, and you sounded like, a, I don't know, like a, it was like a mix of the Swedish chef and like a NASCAR racer announcer type thing i think okay <laughs> don't give me the popeye look hey don't squinty eye me um <laughs> where <are> you <laughs> where's me <Alan>? where you... <laughs> <laughs> oh god i can't do it I, can't... I used to be able to do popeye dude do the squinty anymore. eye thing is I, I i i blame my mom okay the squinty eye thing is because like right here you know where most guys cheekbones they go down i go <laughs> They flare out, so then it makes my eyes really tiny. I smile. This. You know, but anyway. But yes, we really appreciate everybody yeah, just for all the support. Really do appreciate it. Bottom of heart. But don't forget to tweet us throughout the show. We're right here at Obi-Wan-X2 and over there at Yogizilla. And of course, one thing, if Yogi will just do this here. Yogi, do this for me. Right there, guys, look right above his head. There's a voicemail right there, number. And right above that is our network blog. It is our network, guys. Yes, we are on a network. Geekyantics.wordpress.com. And, of course, you guys can listen to all the sh uh, all the list of any of the shows. Stitcher, iTunes, uh, TuneIn Radio. I'm going to miss one. Because I'm not even reading it. Don't. That. <laughs> but anyway... Everything and anything that you guys do want to find out about horseplay, the show, or just what we are doing in general, you guys can head over to, of course, the network global, of course, gang for short, dicks.wordpress.com. You can check out everything. I think I got it right. Yeah. 
Yes. And and we are also on Windows slash Zoom slash Xbox Marketplace for podcasts. Say. So. Hey, Yogi, you want to tell him what the first thing I said to you is? The t- first text was? Hey, text him back. Maybe we can get some game time. <laughs> Yeah, like, can we get? Does that mean we can get a free Xbox One? Hey, we might, we might get this soon. No, enough. I don't want that. I just, I just want some. I just want a card, a speak, subscription. Speak for yourself. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, a subscription card would be cool. Well, I'm just that saying, that's what you have. You know, uh, well, hold on. I can't say this now because, yeah, you know what? I, you know what? I can't. Say. I'll wait till the show because I got I, some I, controversial I, yes. stuff I'm going to say about Xbox. I know, and you were a big fan. I know that, that something happened to change you. In the last day. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I'm still with Xbox One, and we're going to talk about some of the changes over at Microsoft. So, but I don't care. Even if, I don't like PlayStation, but if I got a free PlayStation, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't complain. I'm just not paying for the darn thing. Well, it, but anyway, anyway, we get into that. We have some awesome content on, over at the Geeky Antics site. I know we don't want to get into the Xbox versus PlayStation 4 thing all over mm. again. But we got we, we have some awesome content. One of the pieces we have on there, one of the articles on there is from Fortingard, James Fortingard, who likes to be known as Yuri or just plain old Fort. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a piece, Fort, not Fart, just to make that distinction. And um, he's got a piece uh, review on uh, The Raid 2, Berengal, if I provi- pronounce it properly. It's a martial arts movie, so check that out. We're getting a lot of diversity in our content. And uh, Obi has a really excellent piece we were talking about on episode 15 last week, which uh, talks about um, realism units and realism in shooters. And we've built upon that in our latest update that just went up a few minutes before we started recording this about realism versus um, immersion in games and we talk about a little bit about virtual reality as well which is what we're going to talk about on this show oh, yeah so, it's going to be fun you guys can't yes. wait and also so like, should we keep going on with the intro spiel yeah. yeah so yeah don't forget guys you can leave us a uh, voicemail or fax if you're so inclined at uh 206-415-4987 again that number is 206 206- Four one five four nine eight seven. Now, a few people were saying we should get a toll free number, um, or be able to accept text messages. That number may change when we do do that, but you know we're trying to keep it streamlined as possible and not rack up bills. You know, and uh, we're not a a for profit organization just yet. We're still starting up from the ground up. You know, we're grassroots. And you'll understand. But we'll get there. Say that. Mm. More more. More foreshadowing. <laughs> but yeah, if you leave us voicemails, we will play and respond to your messages live. And um, yeah, it'll be good to make sure you keep it. Uh, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can curse up a storm if you're so inclined. The only thing we ask is that you keep it constructive as possible and uh, short, short and succinct if possible. Uh, five minutes or less, preferably. And, you know, nothing too douchebaggy. You know, don't be like a racist or just go on a flaming uh, bit. But we might play that too, uh, the, the, the flaming, well, you know. Just to pick have... on you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, th- those are our preferences. But if you're, if you're shy, you can also email us at geekyantics at gmail.com. And antics is A-N as in Nancy, T-I-C-S. And so, yeah, today on the show, OB... You excited about it? We got a lot of cool stuff lined up, and I think we're going to make this a thing, try to introduce what we're going to talk about for the rest of the show in the intro. So those, you know, starting off should know what they can know if, if, if they want to listen to the whole episode or not or skip ahead. So we're going to return to our roots in League of Legends, talk more Hearthstone, uh, which uh, Obi and I have been playing and streaming over on our respective channels. Uh, we will also talk about game theory, which... I personally am very, very excited about um, game mechanics, game theory, game design, all that kind of stuff, the behind the scenes stuff of video games, awesome stuff. And we're going to distinguish, you know, with that, we're going to distinguish realism from immersion and vice versa. You know, how do we, de- how do we define realism? Um, is video game violence becoming overplayed? Things, all those tangent issues. And we'll talk about virtual reality as well as part of that. Man, and we'll also maybe point out some April Fools, you know, some people that, kind of have derp status going on, hashtag derp, hashtag derp status, you know, whichever one might trend. And uh, it's going to be a great show. I'm excited. What you got, Obi? Oh, look, we got someone in the chat, too. Oh, yeah. 
But anyway, I am very excited about this. I can't wait. Um, as you guys know, I did put up in. I put up a a, a blog or post on press dot com. You guys go to check that out right now and respond to that because this is going to be read through uh, throughout the show feature. Getting on with it. I don't know where we're at. We are about to segue into man crushes and geek girls. Hit it. All right. So, you know, we have no guests this week, but we will be opening up the lines after our obligatory news. Good, good, good hitting, good, good hitting motion. <laughs> don't forget the baby powder next time for the added effect. But uh, if you want to be a guest or suggest your favorite man crushes and geek girls, contact us via Twitter or the official gang site. And we gave that information earlier, so just make sure you rewind a little bit to our introduction and get all, get all the ways to connect with us. Uh, and we'd love to have you guys. And uh, also, uh, Normie might very well be joining us again. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, at Normie477. Um, but uh, she's re-entered the workforce because she, she, she was enjoying a lot of free time and gaming time because she was injured. She got to stay home and be a stay-at-home uh, wife slash mom. Lucky her. Home girl had to get uh, a job. <laughs> but now she's gotten back, so she probably won't be joining us for too many late sessions uh, unless we start recording earlier or she has a uh, second wind. <laughs> yeah, but you know as well as I do, Normie's second winds are usually really good. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Cause... And, and, and so are her uh, posterior winds, uh, apparently. <laughs> Moving on. I just want to say the word. I just want to say the post. I just want to say posterior. It makes it's a nice way of saying it as. How about now, guys? Sorry about that, guys. We're, of course, the chat again is just like I'm so low. I'm super low, and I don't know why. So, so you sound got good to me, but I have my audio right now. Like oh 70. no no no, I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Mm, interesting stuff going on in the chat. If you if you hear us say things that make no sense to you, that means you probably should be here for the live show. Yes. Just saying. Yes. If you guys want to know what's going on, you gotta be here live. Because if you're not, you're missing out. Trust me. Even if it's one time every great once in a while, you guys gotta hit up the live show. But yeah, there's uh yeah, I don't do that kind of stuff, man. That's just that's just oh, that's terrible. Anyway, Uh-oh, moving oh, on. Oh, oh. Of course, we do appreciate. <laughs> of course, we do appreciate all the downloads and and reviews and the thumbs up and follows and subscription, and all that stuff that you could do on iTunes and uh, Stitcher and all that, whatever's. So anyway, Obi, can I open it up this time? Dude, it's all you. I'm trying not to laugh from the chat. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. It's hey. time for the obligatory news. Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Come on, I heard so, you uh, get it right. Come on. No, it's good. I was re I was re- resounding it. <clears throat> I like the sound effect. So in keeping with our recent uh, arrow madness, our friends at uh, Starling City Radio report that Obi's favorite character, Roy Harper, Harper, Harper why did I say Harper? Uh, <laughs> well, one of your favorite characters will become Arsenal, not Speedy, as a lot of the fans and uh, comic aficionados have uh, assumed and it's gonna it's gonna be interesting so apparently this is more in line with the comics than the cartoons um so he spoiler he, he will not be losing his arm more than likely his arm is safe all right for the people that follow the comics and the world of dc the dc universe more closely that might make sense which one's Ray harper i forgot He's the basically the guy that's becoming kind of uh, uh, Arrow's uh, sidekick. Diggle? Uh, his Thea's uh, boyfriend. Oh, wait. <laughs> How soon we forget. Yes. McMuffin, no, McMuffin's we warning didn't say, us. We did not say he was going to become speedy. We were going to be say we were saying he's going to be like a tank. Well, I'm just saying the general community was assu- assuming he was going to become speedy. Well, the general community is nothing but wrong on this issue. Why would you have somebody that has the 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 power of strength or whatever it is? Why would you just totally off track his character and make him fast now? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because 
It's because in the cartoon, um, Roy Harper becomes Speedy and then he becomes Arsenal. But uh, so they're trying it doesn't to matter anyway because Speedy part. Baby. Yeah, because and all, all, they kind of shot it down anyway because uh, in episode fifteen, I think he said, uh, "Don't call me Speedy," you know. And so yeah, that was kind of like a simple uh, way of shooting it down. Without it wasn't him being uh, self aware of what I, he, would happen. He just didn't like the nickname. Dude, I can't wait till he can. Roy can actually. Uh... Uh, control his temper and work. Yeah, dude. Oh my yeah. god. Cause, dude, if you guys look at it, and we're not gonna get too much in depth with this, okay? Cause we'll we'll actually come back to this when it actually is. But if you guys think about it, you have the arrow, which is basically just badass, or Yogi would say the green arrow, um, in the comics. Um, and then you have his sidekick, which is Diggle, which is like a special forces guy. He just freaking runs the table. And then you have the computer nerd, which is Felicity. Um, she's basically runs everything from, you know, she can do anything. She's a friggin' hacker. She's one of the best in the world. And then you got his girlfriend, Sarah, now, but she is a, what, trained assassin, I think it's called. Um, mm -hmm. that's the word I'm looking for. And then you got some of the bad guys, and then, uh, and, and then who else was there left? Um... As far as like people that uh, have kick ass powers, the, uh, well, because you, you said Diggle already. You got to remember too. Wait, that's Agents of Shield. Never mind. I was getting ready. Well, I was getting ready to put that well, guy that uh, lost. The, you know, the guy that ran in after his son uh, on Shield. That uh, they had to give him a new <laughs> leg. Which that last episode of Shield was also really good, dude. Oh. But uh, <laughs> well, we won't. We got more stuff about Arrow. Some more news. So let's keep going. Because uh, we did the Arrow episode already. I punched, but probably, him. I uh... punched him in his lip, Viper. Pissed me <laughs> off. Yeah, see, people always ask that. I got, you know, I, I don't normally don't mention it because I forget about it. But it's a birthmark, guys. Not the herpes or anything. I didn't get in fight. Just, just letting you know. That I didn't eat any bad coochie. <laughs> I'm glad that's cleared up now. So let's move on. <laughs> people, that's like, that's like the burning question for people. It's like, you don't have any other things to add to the conversation it doesn't, it doesn't bother me i'm just saying it's no funny. It's, the, it's it's not that it, i'm just laughing because of how you said it i know deal with it <laughs> I, i'm used to it already that's why right. but uh so yeah also in uh episode 16 suicide squad i it just finally clicked with me especially after listening to starling city radio like i said at first i heard a voice it sounds familiar well, it turns out that the voice we heard coming from the cell, there was a girl, they showed the back of her head with blonde hair mm -hmm. and pigtails. And again, spoilers, if you're not caught up on Arrow, sorry. But uh, apparently that's Harley Quinn from the Batman universe. So this is awesome because now we're seeing that... Now it's um, tying in. Hmm? Now it's tying into each other. Okay. It's uh, Yeah, the, the girl who did her voice was also the same one that did it on the cartoon. I'm not mistaken that's why it sounded familiar and i think from the video games as well but um it's awesome because we're seeing that dc is really committed to um you know unfolding their entire universe and and they've said themselves that there's not no, no, no characters are you know off limits you know as as far as like uh the batman universe and there's a lot of characters in batman um this is a, something that marvel Sh angels and shields has some some trouble with because they're limited in which characters they can include in on the show but uh you know dc and Mar D dc and marvel are gonna be having you know a fight off you know because uh they they have a lot of stuff at stake as far as tv goes but well so, so far we've seen on arrow we've seen deathstroke deadshot the flash which is barry the guy that felicity liked um the huntress uh, you know, crazy girl to try to kill her father. Wait, she's probably a huh? Never mind. It's the cop, the forensic <laughs> cop, right? That Felicity was kind of in love with for a couple episodes. Yes, the guy that said he was a forensic cop, but we found out he wasn't. Oh, was yeah, like he's cover he's Flash. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, your Speedy saw... right there. <laughs> but Speedy's a whole different character, so it's like, but uh. Yeah, it's cool that they show how he becomes the Flash, essentially, on right on Arrow. So that's awesome. And he's supposed to... I mean, I'm jumping ahead. I, this is already going to be part of the discussion, but he's supposed to be getting his own spinoff show. And there's rumors that the Huntress might get her own spinoff, and there's some other things they might do. Oh. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, but one of the things... Um, I think Mark Guggenheim um, is the director, producer, the producer of the show. 
Um, he confirms that other, you know, definitely other Batman characters will be appearing. And a lot of the fans are hoping for Nightwing or maybe Con- Commissioner Gordon, you know. Maybe one of the criminals escape Gotham City and go to Starling City. And then Commissioner Gordon chases him down and yeah, he collaborates cool. with... Yeah, so that'd be cool. Um, so another... Th- go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the, the the best thing is what I think would ha- would be good was if if Commissioner Gordon would have came in there, then you would have something to do with you know what happens if Batman has to follow or can you know Gordon needs help from Batman, you know what I mean? Mm. Where you know would that possibly could that possibly happen? Maybe maybe I would not hold my breath. Yeah, I would not hold my breath for like Batman or Superman, but like as far as villains and supporting characters, I think they'll show them. They might even show Robin. It's, gonna, it's probably going to be Joker so. that escapes from the insane asylum. Or Riddler or some shit like that. See, Riddler I would love. I don't know how well Joker would work. Well, it could. Joker's better than jo- every, Joker's... every freaking Batman. He's got to do something. He's got to spread. Because before long, Joker's, well, Joker's going to die so really... times. Joker's also got a real hard on for Batman. I, I think his only ju- duty is to, like, you know, create hell Joker, for Batman. Well, Joker and Two-Face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, some more, some more um, kind of previews and speculation about Arrow. So uh, I was I was watching a YouTube video. I think it's called Emergency Awesome, and he they were breaking down a lot of interesting things. Um, kind of looking ahead, it, it, there's a lot of leaked information about the well, not necessarily leaked, but some teasers about what the future episodes will be named. So episode, you know, uh, season two, episode eighteen and uh, twenty are respectively titled. Deathstroke and seeing red. Um, so there's a lot of speculation with that, what that means. Uh, are we going to see the red arrow or, um, you know, Deathstroke is going to see learn more about Deathstroke. I mean, he's he was already introduced, but what's going to really happen there? There's a chance that um, there was talks about the Suicide Squad becoming its own story arc or spinoff yeah. and Deathstroke maybe turning kind of like they're kind of anti heroes, they're not really bad, they're not really good. They're mercenaries for hire. So imagine if Deathstroke joins the Suicide Squad and you know gets over his whole agenda for vengeance, dude. Well, you got you remember that last episode before this, you know, the one prior to this one, um, where Diggle came back and got Deadshot from downstairs. He's like, "No, nah, yep. you're part of my team, dude." So you got to remember, hey, look at this. I guar- I'm I'm not guaranteeing nothing, but I think. This is what I think they're gonna spin off it on, spin it off on, is Deagle, Diggle is still gonna be in with the, the the arrow, but Diggle is actually gonna be like uh like sub like some contracted from the the FBI the the chick or whoever it was to run that four man team because guess what you got Diggle which is what is he the commander he's been in war he runs teams a dead shot you got your sniper right who else we got. Ah, uh, gosh, I forgot already. I mean, those are the you real get the key strong, players. You got that big strong guy. You know, there's your tank. Um, yeah, you got the, the the wannabe Wolverine. Yeah, the guy that, yeah. Uh, you got him. There's your tank. Well, he can't die. So um, so he can be shot several times and still live. Uh, you have your, uh, that one guy. Anyway, but you have a four-man team that... I really think Arrow is going to spin off to where, where Diggle is going to have to actually go off and run that, but still be entwined, intertwined with 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 with, uh, with Arrow. Yeah, I I, I definitely see that um, Suicide Squad alone could become a, um, a spin off. By the way, shout out to Pork Chop because uh, I would type in the chat, but for some reason my Twitch chat's being really retarded right now. But um, yeah, I, I I think Suicide Squad could even be a movie. I mean, the way they introduced them was just really well done. Well, it's like the Fantastic Four, or the, the Fab Four, or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's basically going to be a team branded movie, and then they could do two or three two or three expansions to the main movie. And you're you're you mm-hmm. know, it's just money, really. It just depends on how much they want to do. With that pork chop thing, I want to <laughs> this guy. All right. I, every now and then when I'm I'm out and go yeah, I go out and have a cigarette and just relax. Well, I watch Twitch on my phone. And every single night that I'm here almost Pork Chops is playing something, whether it be Black Ops or not Black Ops, but Call of Duty, um, or, you know, basketball or whatever. 
and he's part of the reason why PS4 is for me. So that props to you, buddy. Thanks for showing up. But <laughs> what about these? Uh, are you are you kind of hoping that Teen Titan comes back out for some reason? Well, you know, they they stopped doing the Teen Titans uh, comics. They, they that came to a close, and the show also stopped as far as the cartoons went. So that would be awesome as a live action format. I don't know if they could get the budget for it, but I love that whole universe. Mm-hmm. Oh man. That'd be pretty cool. But anyway, if you guys want to get more into the the Arrow and DC stuff, definitely check out Emergency Awesome on YouTube and Starling City Radio on uh, Stitcher, iTunes, and uh, allgames.com. And uh, we're ready to jump into some other news that isn't about uh, comics and whatnot. Uh, you know, GDC, the Global Developers Conference, I believe that's what it stands for. But basically, it's it's, it's kind of like the E3 or PAX for developers only. Uh, they have a lot of big news that at face value may not be interesting to gamers, but, you know, if you're like me and you you like game design and you do game development and you also happen to play video games, there's a lot of good stuff to know. But this the following news, I think, impacts gamers in a big way because what I'm about to share is something that's going to make indie gaming stronger and also improve the quality of the games that are coming out as a whole. All right, so one of the things is Unity. Um, you know, Unity is one of them... Uh, kind of development suites and engines that a lot of games are using now because it's really easy to use and you could do a lot of things through the GUI, um, you know, and you could ease your way into it without knowing code as well. So that helps out. Um, but as far as the visual stuff, it makes it very easy, uh, relatively speaking. Um, and uh, a lot of the shooters that have come out, the indie shooters and, and FPS games that come out were developed in uh, Unity. Well, now we're going to see a lot more unity popping up because they're doing uh they're enhancing their gui they're putting out more tools and they're adding full cross-platform support to the point where it's like if you create something for a pc you know one click and you can port it over to ios or to you know mac or whatever so that's really interesting so unity 5 is coming out in 2015 it's going to be a game changer um one of some of the features they have are the physics-based shading uh, early access to WebOS and uh, better audio production. Um, it's a little steep for s- small, you know, solopreneurs, as I like to call them, or you know, small indie shops. Seventy-five dollars per month per user, if I'm not mistaken. But you can have it on two computers, and you have a one-year commitment, so you're locked into a contract. Now, in contrast, Epic, their Unreal Engine, they are finally opening it up. They're making it open source, and their model is way more competitive and unreal engine i mean that's used everywhere uh for triple a games even they're they're gonna open up unreal engine 4 for 19 dollars a month you get access to the source code all right no commitments you can go month to month so you can just get what you need the source code and then cancel afterwards and then start producing the game and then when you want to get the latest updates and get support from them reactivate your your subscription right and what's nice about it, I mean, really, it, it costs practically nothing. The only thing they do on top of that uh, subscription model is that they take 5% of all your game sales as royalties, which is more than fair. Because, I mean, you know, you're not going to get that anywhere else. Getting that kind of power, that 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 kind of engine that looks good and also performs really well, dude, it's going to be a great time to be a gamer and a game developer. Definitely. That's that's something that I'm 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 actually looking forward to. Uh, this is necessarily doesn't really uh, interest me at this time, and like like you said, with a lot of gamers, it's not going to interest them right now. Time where it will interest them and it will affect them the most is if they're they can utilize a lot of this to keep a lot of their what they're doing or their processes together. I mean, because you yep. know, like I told you, like we said earlier. You know, I'm just a gamer, and then when all this stuff hit the fan, you know, would this, would this, would this piece or this product right here be good for that issue, that reason? Probably so. I don't really have much to say, and I didn't really um, look into it. But I mean, I, I would, I mean, if if it was something to where they do trial basis and stuff like that for, you know, for people that are really interested, I would actually do it. Um, you know, just like we were talking about before when. You know, if we got some stuff that we had actually had to try and do and 
make sure that we we gave feedback every single day why not you know that's just letting us try new stuff that is either just coming out or not out yet plus we can show you guys on the on the live show and tell you guys about it on the podcast i mean so it's it's everything is a plus plus win 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 situation now the only thing that is not winning to me is because i have to do a lot of extra work <laughs> yogi's well, the big... used to it i i i'm yeah anyway well the biggest part about it is that this is going to make uh, development much more you know res- research not resource non-intensive it's going to be cheaper to produce games that that means they could pass the savings down onto the to the uh, consumer, and also a lot of people that really don't have the money for licensing or whatever could just self publish and and um you know come out on the platform or come out with their software on the platform of their choice you know so you know we're gonna see a lot more crappy games which is you know a lot of people make fun of indie games because of that but we're gonna see a lot more people taking risks and trying out new things too. So, so then in return for those that like to play, you know, a hundred different games, this is it. I mean, this is your, this is your, this is your heaven right here. There's going to be so many things coming out. Yes. Like Yogi you said, there's going to be bad ones, you know, that are going to, we're going to come out and try and then go, Oh my God, I wouldn't even take a crap on this game. You know, kind of thing like that. But you got to remember <laughs> for every couple of bad ones, there's going to be really one really, really good one that's going to make. And I know that's not the numbers. It's, I think it's like a one. Every 20 games made, one makes it or something like that. Some shit like that. Um, but I mean, even you know, stuff, you know, even if we can actually sit there and play it, back it, do whatever we need to do as, you know, as, as us, because we want to give that information to all you guys. So, uh, I mean, well, you know, with these price points, pretty much if you make a, a, a decent amount of sales and you have a small following, you're going to turn a little bit of a profit and be able to repeat it again and refine what you do. So it's encouraging, but um, moving on from that um, Walmart, they announced that they're getting into the used game sales market, which is kind of funny because that. yeah, that, that I thought that bus already kind of left, but it does. It is interesting. They're going to the GameStop is ha- going to have to step things up because their their trading programs suck as they suck for the consumer unless you're really desperate, but for them it's great. I mean they it's like two bucks. That's all you get for almost a brand new game. You get like five dollars. Oh yeah, they don't even factor in the freaking uh, edition of the games, you know. So yeah, de- definitely like like Carth said, it's definitely a little late. Oh yeah, by the way, GUI is graphical user interface, <laughs> but uh. Just wanted to make sure I covered that. I don't want people thinking I'm talking about like some kind of weird goo stuff, you know, nothing weird. But, but yeah, well, I mean, it's cool because with Walmart doing it, I mean, I think even GameFly is, yeah, GameFly does use game sales. Yeah, but GameFly you know? is something totally else, some something totally different to where all you got to do is pay ten dollars a month and you can keep them for as long as you want to, and then you just yeah, but send them back after, but after they rent out a game X amount of time, they sell them used. Yes, yes, but that's on their website, but that's that was already established. This is something that Walmart's actually coming out with to actually yeah. to actually compete and I and I don't want to say this too much because I'm not the my words don't always make but to actually compete with the places like GameStop. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's just another big guy pushing Sorry to say it like well, that, but you got to think about it. Well, GameStop no by no means little. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to Walmart, they're a, an ant. Yeah, because you got you know with, with Walmart being it's in it's in Arkansas and and in uh, at, uh, Fayetteville or something like that. Um, I mean you got you know twenty WalMarts in Texas alone, and you got you know twenty six in Arkansas and Michigan. You got uh, where I live, um, and you got twenty seven WalMarts. You got I think what like sixteen just in Atlanta and Georgia. I mean come on. Um, we're not, not that many. Still, there's so many more Walmarts than there are GameStops just because it's that old. But I think this is, if GameStop does not step up what they're doing or give people a little bit more money, you know, they need to look at three different, you know, three different things. How old is the game? What's the condition? And, you know, what, what is the game? You know, if it's a, you know, a, a 2010 freaking Tiger Woods, I'll give you, a, I'll give you 50 cents for it. That's about it. Nobody's gonna play 2010. 
especially being you know 2014. So it's it's you know there's a lot of things that they should they should they should help out with and 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 give a little bit more money on it. But really, this is working for them. They're making more money right now. GameStop's making more money right now, especially with all the new pre-releases coming out that they have um, close to. You know, they're the only ones allowed to release it on the release date. You know, and there's just things like that that. I don't really think Walmart's going to roll over them, but they're trying. Well, the one thing that's beneficial is, you know, people in the ghetto that uh, spend their money on weed and booze could just uh, trade in games to get get groceries (laughs) or other things. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm saying while everyone else is thinking. There's going to be a lot of ghetto stuff going on. It's like, I'm going to trade in all my kids' games and get myself some makeup. Mm-hmm. No, just just uh, send me a private message. I'll hook you up with some. Eh? I, never mind. Okay. I'm... Yeah. If you guys have ever, any of you that um, are watching now, if you guys have ever watched Jeff Dunham, okay? And you know the, the little puppet Peanut, right? Where he just go heck it 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 meow and then bring his head right over top of his head, you know, like the, it went way too far over. Yogi's is like way up here. So um, you know, love you, buddy. Um, uh, but <laughs> moving on here, we're getting sidetracked very very badly. Yeah, you you take the rest of the obligatory news. I need I need to take a bio real quick. I broke the seal. The seal. Where are we at? I don't exactly know. Obligatory new. There we are. EA's. Peter Moore, he wanted to apologize for the April Fool's tweets uh, made in bad taste by Dice. In these tweets, they mock now underpowered uh, the Wii U is, uh, quantum entanglement, uh, and, and zero latency. Um, <laughs> why he did this is beyond me. Uh, why you would make a, you know, April Fool's, yes, okay, hey, ha, gotcha. But when you're just totally dogging somebody out just because their Wii U sucks. <laughs> and then you want to come back and actually say, oh, hey, guys, I'm sorry for saying that. Yeah, that's, no. You know, have a good day. You said what you said. It's just like when Duck Dynasty's, uh, I can't remember his name, said what he said about um, the, the gay and lesbian community. Um, yeah, he was not liked. He'll be confirmed for big, no, I'm not. Um, but he was confirmed as he was just not liked. All I mean, his show is huge, and all of a sudden he said something about the gay and lesbian community, and he's evil. He needs to be more open minded. But when somebody asks a question to somebody that's that raised that way, and that's all they know, of course they're going to speak their mind. Don't get mad at for somebody for speaking their mind when it's you know your fault for doing it in the first place. Far Cry Two's Clinton mocking and. Portals Kim Swift, I'm about reading this wrong, joined Team Amazon Fire TV at Amazon Game Studios, which is uh, hopefully that's going to be, I don't really know much about it. He's telling me to read all this stuff, and I'm like, eh, what? Well, well, I'm, I'm back now. It is, you are, and I'm like, I'm like crying inside right now because I'm scared. But, but dude, I wanted to, to say, I didn't want to talk about the April Fool's tweets from the, the DICE oh. team at over at EA. I think it's just funny if you read some of the tweets. Some of the stuff they were saying was like, "Okay, we pre- we pre- we mastered the arts of uh, quantum entanglement and zero latency. Now you could run Call of Duty, I mean Battlefield on the Wii U or something like that." And I was like, uh, "I was to say Call of Duty. Ooh, that's, that's blasphemy." I know, but, I'm uh, ready to sit there. But it was just funny. Like the stuff they were saying was just. <laughs> was great basically they had to like defy the laws of science to in order to get the wii u to play uh good games like uh they're saying that they're gonna tweak the 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 frostbite engine to to downscale to like 320p and st- stuff like that like all this stuff they were saying i just took total and you know what i don't think he had to apologize i think it wasn't good taste because it's an april fool's joke you know well, what I was saying before you got back was basically if you're going to say something like that, and I brought up the Duck Dynasty thing for what he said, um, if you're going to say something like that, expect it. Don't sit there and be like, oh, now i got to retract it. I'm sorry for saying that. No, if you're going to say something that's stupid or that, you know, even though it was all in fun and games, 
expect a retraction. I mean, you expect for somebody to say, hey, dude, you're a dick. Well, yeah, but it wasn't even Peter Moore. It was, you know, it was a division of EA, but Peter Moore stepped in to kind of, you know, apologize for one of their 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 studios, you know. I think, I think it was unnecessary. It was nice, but people need to stop being, you know, so butthurt about jokes. I mean, it's April Fool's and no holds barred. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, you go ahead. I'm we're not we're up we're down here still. We're already down here. So you thought about uh <clears throat> Yeah, but what uh, did I delete this here? And of course Oh yeah, okay, Rockstar I remember now. Star has announced that GTA five online play will feature heists this spring. You could actually do some heists on GTA five um with all your friends. So if you guys have ever thought about robbing a bank, uh, uh, please try it virtually first. See how it goes. Uh, if you get shot to hell, don't do it in real life. Just saying. You know, a little food for thought for you guys. Yeah, so That was definitely. really stupid. <laughs> Far Cry 2's Linton Clint Hawking and Portal's Kim Swift join Team Amazon Fire TV. You want to elaborate about this, little yogi? So yeah, Amazon Game Studios is uh, putting out the Amazon Fire TV to kind of compete with Apple TV. Mm -hmm. Now, they say it's not going to be a gaming device, but they're going to have games available on it. Okay, whatever. But, uh, you know, as we've been talking about the past few weeks, uh, Apple's moving to the market, Amazon, and there's some other people that are stepping in. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. But it's you know they I don't understand why they're saying it's not a gaming device, but they're getting people from gaming companies to join their team. It's like okay, something's funny there, but whatever. <laughs> I'm not even. I, that's all I got on that. I'm not even gonna say anything else. Yeah, but we might as well just keep going because I got nothing either. <laughs> By the uh... way, Game of Thrones returns this Sunday, guys. So if you like that show. Get ready. Make sure your DVR is set. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and I'm catching up now as we speak. But I've started watching it, and I can't believe I didn't watch it from the beginning. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Who's stoked See, about this? I mean, are you stoked about this, Yogi? Guys in chat, are you guys uh watch that and ready for this start back up? Oh, I definitely am, and and I can tell you that I I'm like you. I waited. I held off on it when the books came out, and someone recommended me mm -hmm. them. I was like, this sounds like something that ought to be turned into a show. Soon enough, sure enough, it did. And I said, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off because I I knew with all the hype there was, I I would see a lot of spoilers as the show is going along, and that I would I also feel like when things are overhyped, I, I enjoy them less because then my expectations are set way too high. So I just only recently got into it like a year or so ago and did like marathon sessions and I'm all caught up. Actually, it's been less than I'm that. I'm not even caught up yet. I'm trying to hurry up and catch up. It's great. Uh, but now I'm dreading being caught up and having people spoil that season as they go along. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm stoked about it. Definitely. Well, be good. Um, Mike... Boobies. And, and yeah, boobies. That's, that's, the focal, that's the focal point of every man. Uh, of every day, he wakes up and goes, "Boobies." Oh, there's some. Okay, more boobies. Where can I see some boobies? That's just how we think. Microsoft's Xbox division. It was reported that uh, by uh, B Team Podcast, B Team Podcast. <laughs> they reported that Phil Spencer is now taking over the head of that division. Hopefully, he can do something to keep. Hmm. I don't want to say this the wrong way. No, you know what? I'm going to say it anyway. Hopefully, he can actually make it better. Because in my eyes right now, and yes, all you guys know that Obi is Xbox, 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 Xbox. Screw it. Obi is now switching sides. I'm going to say it now. Yeah, Yogi, I don't care. PS4 all the way. Now, there's three reasons why I do this. If that's your prerogative, brother. I don't, I don't necessarily get into that. But two reasons why I'm doing this. Okay. Xbox is for one, just it's straight up pissing me off. Um, I've been trying to get some, you know, little things that I look at because I'm a streamer, I'm a recorder, you know, I like to do videos, I like to do a whole bunch of things. And the by the time buying the Xbox One, and getting everything set up, getting all everything to what I'm doing now, and get everything going, I'm still gonna spend more money if I just buy a PS4 
Um, even if I just use the capture card that's in there, or even if I buy a new one, an HD one, it, it, it's, I'm still going to spend less money and then buying, you know, three or four games on top of it. I got more of that when we actually get that to uh, that kind of show. But, yes, PC is the master race, and it will forever stay that way. But, of course, with, uh, if you're having some very serious uh, PC voodoo issues like I'm having, um, and consoles looking much better every day. I'm sorry to say that, Yogi, but it's it's just getting to the point where oh, it's getting hard. I'd rather sit here at my desk like I'm at right now and play be playing Xbox or be playing PlayStation at the time. just because I'm yeah. Anyway, moving on. I love you, but I will not be joining me. you on the PS4. I don't care. Unless one, I didn't invite one less you. falls off a truck and goes on, on my curb. I didn't invite you, though. That's the thing. You should... Screw you, then. No, we're not. We're, you're not my type. I already told you that, too. <coughs> we, need, we need to have a conversation about sexual harassment in the workplace after this. <laughs> sexual <laughs> harassment, panda. Sexual harassment, panda. The most encouraging thing about the news is that Phil seems to be very um, authentic. Seems to I probably yeah I said it right. Uh, he seems to to actually want to make uh, do the job and actually make Xbox the division better. Hopefully he can get that going. Um, but moving, I don't know where I was at, and you kind of did that. So every week Sorry. we try to get into and make sure that we fix mistakes. God, there's still a little bit, a it's little part me. left in that. My bad. I'll skip into the part that I was gonna read. When, when Phil was uh, questioned and asked about it, if the E3 announcement would be enough to sell more Xbox One units, he simply responded, "The consumer decides that. I mean, we we decide what we want to buy, regardless of what anybody does. You could tell anybody and everybody the Xbox has this, the PlayStation had four has this." Xbox has this, it, you know, they don't have, you know, you can go back and forth all day long. It's whatever your preference is. The last reason why I'm probably going to get an Xbox, a PS4 is because 99% of my friends have PS4. I would Poor saps. Yeah. So. And I bet you, and I bet you most of them converted from the 360 when they said, oh no, X, Microsoft's going to ban used games being played on the system and oh, and, and and the PS4 plays in 1080. The the Xbox only plays in 720. All that stuff's been blown out of proportion. It has. But my favorite thing though is that Sony fanboys have always been saying, "Oh, PlayStation Network is free, and you got to pay for Xbox Live." Well, you do too now, so suck it. That's Though I do, I, gotta, I do gotta say, PlayStation Plus, it's nice that they have they do offer better free games than uh, games with gold. But right. I, I'm encouraged with Phil with Phil Spencer. He seems down to earth. You know, he seems very honest and charismatic. I think he's gonna turn turn things around. But uh, you know, listen to the, listen to the B team. They got some some good news on that. Some good uh, perspective. And uh, again, Phil's got a good track record, and he's humble. That's that's more than you can say about most of these uh, business spokespeople in monkey suits. But uh, yeah. I'll be on Xbox One soon enough. Ooh, yeah. But I still play PC more than anything. We're always going to play PC. Um, Xbox and PlayStation 4 is just something that we can do uh, extra. Because I'm sorry, guys, I and mean, we're on computers all the time. But with what Yogi does outside of the horse play, um, is he's on a computer 15 hours a day. He doesn't want to be on a computer that much. Play some kind, you know, get get on a controller unless he has what it are at. Blah, blah, blah. Unless he has all that already from his computer, which he does because he's already showed me before. Rough. I'm sorry. I love you guys in the chat, but I will not ever get a PlayStation. I already had a PS2, and I had a and yeah, I, I played it, but I played my GameCube more than I played my PS2. That should tell you something. Port Shops is gonna leave this. Go ahead. That was a uh, uh, <laughs> Port Shops is gonna leave the stream and go. I'm never going back there. I quit my fucking stream on this night to watch this crap. Ah, you guys shouldn't play PS4. I have nothing against uh, people that own PS4. I mean, a lot of my clan members went to PS4. 
even though I told them I'm gonna be on Xbox and Xbox 360, and they still went and got uh, PlayStations, and I was like, okay, and they're like, oh, why don't you get a uh, PlayStation Yogi? Then we can play together. Like you knew before you bought this system that I had an Xbox, and you still bought the PlayStation. So you don't really want to play with me, and I don't want to really want to play with you. I love you. I want to play with you, Yogi. I like that. Where do you want me to play with? And awkward silence. <laughs> yep. I'm just going to pump my e-cig and uh, pretend that did not happen. You guys make sure that you guys do listen to B-Team for more of this. And uh, this basically, they're just they're on it like white on rice. Still, it has a great track record, of course, like Yogi said. And um, they do a pretty good job for the division. Corrections every week we decide to, you know, we make some listen to the podcast, of course, for you guys. And just make corrections that otherwise you guys would point out regardless but oh be <laughs> official and just say hey guys we're gonna make a few corrections and give you a couple updates of what's going on in our world with uh, the geek uh gang uh and yogi's gonna go a little bit over some of the corrections and updates for this week <laughs> obi was doing the pp down leaning in like this and just look at his forehead but uh so yeah, a few weeks back we were talking. We talked about the upcoming uh, LOL features and um, you know in, in version four point X, you know, and some of the stuff in the PPE, the public beta environment. And you guys, if you guys have been following us since day one, we're really big on the League of Legends, but we had to kind of cut our addiction off a little bit. We didn't want to become the League of Legends podcast or a League of Legends podcast, though it is a big part of what we talk about because it's one of the games we keep on on uh, constant rotation. Well. Right now, we got to get back into it because LOL is heating up. And we got to talk about some of the recent updates. One of the things I'm excited about is Mystery Skins. They're back, and they're now 490 RP, 490 Riot Points. Uh, basically, like, the equivalent of, like, $5 US, five US dollars, roughly. And the cool thing about it is that you can score just about anything. I mean, I think this should always be a thing, the Mystery Skins. Because I've heard of uh, I've heard of people and some of my friends scoring th- premium skins, like Broloff and Pulsefire Ezreal for that price. So I might be going in there spinning the wheel because I got some RP stashed away for any day, and uh, that, that's that's awesome. And I mean, otherwise their pricing is a little ridiculous, but you know that's the mystery skins is really cool. Uh, another thing, so you know with all the April Fool stuff going on. Um, I'm gonna make an April Fool's pick. April Fools, uh, the April one of the April Fools that I'm gonna highlight is uh, whoever converted Ob from Xbox One to PS4. My heart is hurting right now. But anyway, moving on. Thanks to April Fool's Day, rumors of Riot considering a subscription model started to float around, and uh, you know people started really believing this, and they started reporting it on podcasts. I don't ever, you know, we don't ever see this happening. Uh, as a collective, uh, me and Obi and I, and just everybody that we associate, just anyone that plays League of Legends enough knows that they don't need to go to a, a subscription model because they're making t- their money, they're making tons of money without subscriptions. And we're going to get into just how much money they're making later on in, in, in a little bit. But uh, this is not happening. They're not going to subscription model. Free to play is what help, has helped the game grow in just four years. I mean, just two years ago with a free to play model. LOL surpassed WoW, World of Warcraft, in overall players. And it surpassed Call of Duty in daily logins. And it's still growing. So, I mean, in January 2014, let's put it in perspective, Forbes revealed that League of Legends now boasts an astonishing 27 million daily players and 67 million monthly players. And they report that at any given time, up to 7.5 million players are logged on concurrently at the same time. That's what concurrently means. For at the same time, 7.5 7.5 million people worldwide are playing the game. Now, in contrast, when you put that in perspective, let's, put, let's go ahead and put that into perspective. World of Warcraft had uh, had peaked at 12 million monthly players, just 12 million compared to 65 million. Now, 12 million no slouch, but still. That was in 2010 when World of, World of Warcraft hit its peak. Now it's you know nowhere near that. Now est- estimates place Riot's uh, league revenues at 624 million. Yeah, mind blown, right? 
Now, for those, uh, you know, moving now, we'll go away from the financials. For those into the professional gaming scene, uh, there's news that talks about how Scara has retired as a player and will be coaching for Dignitas in place of Reggie. Um, Obi, do you keep up with the LCS at all? I could really give two shits. <laughs> and I only say that because... Oh, that's a slappable offense. I, I'm just saying that because there's people that have all these dreams about becoming pro players, and they're like, I'm going to watch the greats, and I'm going to become just like them. It's like, no, don't do that. But Find your own play day, style. Yes. I mean, I watch them here and there, but, like, like, I love playing League of Legends. Watching it, like, when someone else is playing it competitively, those games are very tedious. It's just people farming and waiting each other out, you know? It's... I'd rather have a game with someone Leroy Jenkins that does something really stupid like Tower Dive, you know? I do have some good news, though. I'm not going to tell anybody what pro it is because, um, yeah, you guys would make fun of them. But yesterday, I did beat a pro in a ranked. It'll be a, it's a pro from an LCS team. OB. Pro? I'm going to guess pro. that it... I'm going to guess it's someone from Evil Genius or what's that other group? That Whoever they have on it's the a, League of it's Legends. It's a U.S. It's, a, it's, a, it's an N.A. team. Oh, okay. I'm not telling you. Don't ask. Uh, no, that's he fine. Was actually, uh, actually, he actually whispered me and added me and said, dude, that was a hell of a game. Nice job. And I was like, it was all luck. All my spears with Nidalee, they just magically landed. I don't even know how I hit you. Like, dude, great <laughs> job. I'm like, mm. I played another I game and then got my ass stomped. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, I let, all, I, all, I, all I want to say on that is that there was whoever those douchebags they show on League of Legends when you log in now the, for the LCS, I forgot what team it was, one of the European teams. It's like, why did they all look like douchebags? They all have punchable faces. And they're all like, mm, look at me. I'm a pro player. <laughs> uh, I'm a Let me stop. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not much of a follower in esports, but I do give uh, Scar mad props for ponying with Diana. Uh, he's kind of brought Diana back in, and she's, she is one of my favorites. Um, now, uh, Obi, you know, we talked several times about Heimerdinger, and uh, I smell a Heimerdinger nerf coming. Even though we both agree that he falls off late game, it's not coming. They, I think it's going to happen because they overtune him. His early game is annoying as hell. He's annoying to try to gank. He's annoying to play in mid lane. And now we're seeing him more in top lane because, uh, what was it, the Copenhagen Wolves uh, started playing him, one of the, guys, the in, players. In top. And five And one. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense because, think about it, the typical top laners won't be able to counter a Heimerdinger because he has the range, you know, and he'll outzone them. I mean, then no, you know, usually you see depends, on top, you see. Depends on who that top lane is. But usually a top's usually a, a, a melee fighter, you know, and there's no one really that can keep up with Heimerdinger in that situation. Unless you, unless you counter, because uh, uh, Jace is actually one of Heimer's uh, counters. Um, yeah. So it's, he's one of his hard counters, actually, too, because of the, the melee and uh, ranged attacks, but. Heimerdinger, really, all they're going to do, if they do give him a nerf, they might nerf him, yes. Uh, I can say that. Um, but the only thing I really think they're going to nerf is his uh, his turrets at um, low levels between 1 and 5. I think they're just going to d- lower that damage. Because, dude, he can put three turrets down, and if all those turrets hit you, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't even have to Q you. You're forced. You're, you're forced to stick with your creep, your creeps, and you miss out on a lot of farm because of it. You well, know, you're missing out on those last hits. Right. Well, especially if you play, you know, the the, the melee mids like I do, with you know Gragas, Kazix, you know, all the other ones that I don't have that I rarely have. You know, I have my Q and of course my W on Gragas and Kazix, but really, I want to be able to get in there and actually, you know, use my slam, use my you know whatever I'm gonna use. I can't. You can't. Yeah, you can't charge in, but uh, but um, what you call it? Um, what I think, well, they they already kind of tweaked him a little bit. They made it. Remember, he it used to be that he could set down turrets and they would stay active even if he walked away. Now he, there's like a fifteen hundred range or so with uh with his turrets. He has to be close to them pretty much. 
Um, yeah. So that's fair enough, but I still think he needs a little bit of tweaking. So he's, he's you know, good. He's viable throughout the entire game. Um, but I, I know now that he, the, the you know, Copenhagen uh, played him. You're going to see a lot of people doing the whole net play thing, trying to copy the build, you know, and, and, and do the same kind of kit and, um, progression and whatnot. Um, I think it's definitely going to we're gonna see some tweaking because they, basically when, when any of these, like, MOBAs, RTSs, well, not so much the RTSs, but, like, MOBAs and, and uh, you know, MMOs tend to do, follow the same kind of process. Uh, TCGs, too, where when they see the metas becoming too stale, they start changing things up. So, so to to encourage different kind of plays, um, and so, so that's good. Um, but you know, what do you think are some good? I mean, those counters are annoying. Those turrets are annoying as hell. So, what are some good counters? I'm thinking Brand, Ziggs, Zerath, or Akali. Any, any, I'm just throwing a Akali. Any, Akali. Anybody now? There's uh, Akali, yes, but you got to remember she is melee, so that's gonna hurt her a little bit. Anybody? But she's that, bursty though. Yeah, that. It can do it, but if he hits one turret on you and his stun, he can then turn around one time and hit you with a one shot, and you're dead. Um, you know, because if he puts a if he puts a turret now for a Kali, if he puts a turret inside her shroud, you can see a Kali. Oh yeah. So it really doesn't, you know what I mean? If Kali hits your shroud and he throws a turret down right there, it's not gonna sit there and 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 you could just be hitting her over. Um, yeah. A couple of good uh, counters for Heimerdinger would be, like I said, Jace if they were up top, or even in a mid situation if you're, you know, uh, your mid laner up to the top. But that would be kind of, um, <laughs> you know, little things like that. Uh, I think uh, Ziggs would uh, counter him fairly well. Yeah, definitely. Um, for that range, LeBlanc might counter him fairly well. Uh, and that being just because they're ranged champions, um, and LeBlanc can distortion in and out so fast that you I mean you can as fast as you can spam your keys. I play yeah. all the time now. I love it. Get level six and just beat somebody's ass in the ground. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can actually counter him with. But then on top of it, if it's one, he's like Cassidy, he gets one kill. He can snowball like a motherfucker. See, Kassadin, he should not be a ban anymore. I think they should be banning Heimerdinger instead of Kassadin because he's going to be played a lot oh, more. He's more Kassadin, of an auto-pick now. Kassadin is still a massive... They've reworked him a lot, bro. I don't think he's as viable. Still a threat. You got to think, no. Well, the only time Kassadin is really not a threat, and this is getting into playing versus hundreds of them, um... Is if if Cassidy can get one kill, I was saying with Heimerdinger, this is true for him. If he can get one kill, Cassidy can snowball the rest of the game into a, you know, yeah, a legendary. Um, yeah, it should say if if you can get one kill on him, yes, he can still come back, but he's not going to farm as safely. He's not going to. He's just going to be you know a little bit scared throughout the game. Well, if you know if you can exploit that. Then of course. So, yeah, I think Castleman's like an opportunist. But he's an opportunist, much like um, cool. Katrina, where like if you mess up um, an initiation, if you initiate the wrong way, or you slip up somehow, you miss misposition, and then you try to run away. You, there's no real getting away from him once you let him, you know, hit you to the face. So. But uh, I I don't know I, I, I looking at how annoying Heim, Heimer doing he's just not fun to play against unless you have the right kind of champion against him maybe even like a Lux you know because you're gonna miss out on a lot of farm because of his turrets but um I I, I would say if you're gonna if people are auto banning um ca um Cassidy all he has to do is hit, him one hit time. all he has yeah. to do is hit the minions one time and his turrets actually make him money yeah it's just like it's just like Elise. If they're spiting spiderlings, it's just the same thing. Or uh, Timo kills you with his shrooms. It's or you know, or whatever. It's just. Um. But <coughs> by the way, uh, Pork Chop said GameCube greater than uh, PS2. I agree. I, I loved my GameCube. That was the last time I was really excited about Nintendo. Though I did enjoy my Wii, Wii when for the brief time I had it. But anyway, 
So let's get let's get to the real meat and potatoes about League of Legends as we know it right now. Uh, the team builder we had talked about that. We forgot to mention URF, which was in uh, private beta for a little while. But uh, th- those are really the biggest. I would say they're the biggest updates since they implemented the ARAM and mirror matches. All right now, URF is ultra fire, ultra rapid fire mode, and it's hilarious. Now, if you're the kind of person that's a purist and it's like, I only like to play serious battles like blind pick or blah 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 or you know rank Q, you miss. It's so much fun. I mean, you know, all the cooldowns are reduced drastically. Eighty percent. Everyone, yeah. I mean, they they go. Obi Obi's been doing his research, but uh, you know, everyone has unlimited energy, mana, stamina, whatever it is you're using. Um, and 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 you know, while this mode is meant to be silly fun. I find that it's really a great way to test out the kind of like the effectiveness and sustainability of certain item builds and combos. I mean, you could try characters that you're a little rusty with, different champions that you're maybe maybe a little rusty with, and try new builds out and see how effective they are in clutch situations. Like I was playing Draven again, and I was, I was playing against some really hard, hard hitting people, and they were spamming the crap out of me. But the build I set up had so much life steal that and, and attack speed. That even though they were doing crazy burst damage, I was surviving all these crazy battles, and I was one. Of, I was like in the top four, uh, as as far as like kill death ratio. I, I had like only three deaths. Everybody else had like ten deaths or more. It was like insane. I had one. I definitely had one of the least amount of deaths. So, you know, it's really. I, I think it's a. It's not only just a fun mode, but it lets you kind of like dabble a lot more experiment a lot more and just have fun with the game well and 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 you guys that are kind of like me and you like playing champions that you ban spam your q or your uh most of it's your just spam your because you never run out of mana so if you play people like i do like ziggs Gragas, leblanc all the guys that have that freaking bursty q button or the uh whatever it is uh, you can just spam it over and over and over and over and over again. You never, I mean, you can spam bouncing bombs until you kill him or he goes away. Uh, you know, uh, alt uh, cooldown reduction is like eighty-five percent. So, if you look at a a an alternate an alt from Ziggs, which is a uh, hundred and some odd seconds or whatever it is, uh, it's only down to like twenty, twenty percent uh, or thirty thirty-two seconds cooldown for the Big Inferno. Yeah. But anyway, just yeah. just having that is just it's just fun. You guys want to try it, go ahead and try it. Get in it. I'm I'm probably gonna probably get in it here later after the show. Uh, if you guys want to play, we'll uh, we'll rock up some <laughs> couple I'm uh, down. couple people and we'll take some people from the show that want to play, of course. Drunken drunken lol, I'm all for it. I'm sorry, I was pumping I was uh, texting, I'm uh, pimping the show out some more, texting and tweeting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely, I'm down for that. I, I'm actually pretty wired, even though I'm a little feeling a little nice right now. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked about that. But the biggest thing that I was I was looking forward to that's finally here, uh, and I have to dabble with a lot more is Team Builder. Now, if you're not familiar with this, basically the essence of of Team Builder is that you create matches with specific line assignments. So you can have you could switch it up and have a mage top or do a dual lane. And as the host, you get to set up the parameters for the game. You know, he's putting his hand up. Okay, hold on, I'll let you chime in. I'll let you chime in. Hold on. But the cool thing is that, uh, you know, the host have the ability to kick people in the mode. And, um, you know, it's a great... It, it, it's The way I see it is this mode is what we've been waiting for to replace blind pick as a testing grounds, uh, as a training grounds of sort. Um, I love this because now we can see some new team compositions new team comps and some new lane assignments beyond the usual dreadfully stale one one two format you know it's always one top one mid two bot and that's that's boring you break the meta you know i think this is ground break breaking and and you know what good job right good job i mean seriously this team builder thing is great it it takes a little longer to queue up if you have specific kind of requirements but it's neat because everybody essentially gets to play the role they want there's no fighting over it um and you jump into a game that matches your playing style and what you want to do and and there's less of this pressure of oh you suck at this role or what are you doing because now the people are focusing on their own gameplay the way it should be 
because they're playing the role they want to play. They're playing the character they want to play. And, you know, it's it's more about them focusing on what they're doing than, oh, you took ADC, I wanted to be ADC, and now you suck as ADC, blah, 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 you lost a game. <laughs> you know, I think we're going to see a lot less of that because of this team builder. What, what do you think about it, Obi? Well, the the several, and and nobody ever sees me online, that's why. Um, that's because I get online at three o'clock in the morning, or five o'clock in the morning, sleeping. So I be alone. Um, and I love, I love it because now I get to hang out with Obi. He's he's hanging out on my time schedule. That's, um, my, but that's my sweet spot. With the with the certain ones that I've and I've set up each position. I've even went with a, um, I think I went at least, and then I picked any. Uh, I think I got stuck in the, stuck in the top lane, but it was it's just. The one thing I like about it the most is you don't have to click that open play or the the blah blah blah. Yeah, I, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know. You don't have to. You know, basically, when you get into the game, you don't have to get into chat and say mid or top or whatever because you're already choosing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's fighting yep. over it. You actually get to you get queued in with somebody. Like if you have a buddy and. Uh, I tried it out with one of my friends uh, where he went in as support, I went in as ADC. And then, like, two seconds later, we picked up a mid laner, a jungle, and a yeah. Now, it, it kind of sucks to the point where you have to stick to the meta in there um, while picking. Uh, I mean, you have to have the two bot. You have to uh, but go anywhere. But it's basically they have the same team or and against did the same same thing so you gotta remember they're doing what they want to do as well so the the quality of game is going to go up uh the gameplay um unless you're just getting unless you just queue into a you know a bronze five player and you're you know a gold or even a diamond um yeah of course you're going to stomp them in the ground but with the 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 new process that everybody's doing with the team builder it's it's actually taking into account what rank you are as well it's going to put bronze players with bronze players, and then, of course, bronze one be into silver five and silver four, and then so on up and on up the spectrum with different uh, levels. I mean, I think it's going to be good th in that aspect, but, I mean, it's really too early to say anything about it, especially with, um, you know, because like ARAM, when ARAM came out, he's like, dude, I don't even like this, or I hope this stays, or I hope, I can't, you know, I, I loved it when it came out. I can't, I've never, I haven't played it in or since it came out, because I don't need to, I want to play my two or three games that I have time for and get off. <laughs> yeah, but you know what, Aram is sometimes like if you if you don't have a specific role in mind and you just want to jump into a game real quick and just fuck around, it's a great way to get a quick fix because it, it usually queues up really fast because people just take whatever they got. Once in a while, you'll get the person that's not happy with uh, who they randomly rolled and they're like, yeah, and I don't have any rerolls so, and then they leave, but. For the most part, it's way better than blind pick, and no one's going like, "Oh, I wanted to play ADC, or I wanted to do top," you know. And again, it goes back to that whole thing, you know, um, people fighting about positions. Now, a team builder completely gets rid of that, you know, and right. and 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 you don't have the reluctant support anymore because the person playing support is someone that queued in to play support. Done. Well, and that's the good part about it is, like I said, you just don't have to fight anymore. That's just how it, I mean, that's that's the fun part about it. Not, it's now to where the point where you're actually getting people that actually want to play the game because they didn't queue into a, they didn't say in chat fast enough that they wanted mid and they got, a, they're forced to play support um, or, you know, or whatever. Or the ADC is the only thing, and this has happened to me so many times. ADC is the only position left open and I'm on my, my, my Smurf account. And all I have is mages and top laners. <laughs> it's you know, it's it's you know, it's just things like that. Now I'm glad that we can actually pick, because uh, then you can just pick. You know, like I I pick a lot of times. I'll pick Gragas or Ziggs or Nidalee and just go mid. See what kind of comps like Yogi says. See what kind of comps you get. There might be a comp that nobody's ever expecting, but then you play it and you're like, you know, um, but I I think time will tell. Basically, with that, Yogi, know, yeah, I really don't, we don't want to come across and say that this is going to happen and it's not going to happen and this should happen and you know I'm totally being dumbass for it. Um, 
I, I, well, I, I the think one thing it I'll can say... be good if people actually don't exploit and freaking just troll people. It's gonna I, happen. I just, yeah, I mean that's inevitable. It, it is League of Legends, possibly the most caustic community out there. But I think having Team Builder and having ARAM and having URF reduces the toxicity a lot and if you're new coming into league of legends or you've been on the fence about it or maybe you haven't played in a long time it might be time to revisit it because you know you have a lot more gameplay options you can even play the mini if you want to uh though that's probably just as bad as blind pick as far as the people complaining about how you're playing but you know you have these more casual modes where you can have fun you can still be competitive but there's less pressure about well I took the, I took ADC and someone else wanted it, and now if I suck at it, he's going to freaking flame me every second. You know, if I make one mistake, that's all I'm going to hear. Uh, so, you know, people checking your CS, like, oh, look at your creep score. It's terrible. Yes, you, you're terrible at farming. It's like, yeah, but I haven't died at all, and you've died like 20 times. You're still terrible. Kill yourself. <laughs> you know, it's not always like that on League of Legends, but it is. Have For those people that are that are basically they play Dota 2 or something like that, and they're thinking about coming over. I can say for a fact, and, and, and yes, guys, I'm. Um, what do you mean? Your thumbs up. You're the one that's going to teach me. Um, but it's going to be. I really think that if you want something to relax and you play a couple of games that are actually more people have moved over to, they're not from Dota 2. Um, it, it's, it's a great game. Um, I don't have to sit there and, and we don't have to sit here and plug it the whole show because it doesn't need to be. League of Legends is League of Legends. Um, I think there's a couple of people in the clan that I'm in, in the army clan that I'm in, they call it uh, Legion of Leggings. So every time they ask me what I'm playing and if I'm playing that, I tell them I'm playing. Which, fun fact, that matches what, what was originally going to be one of our road, you know, ongoing recurring segments was going to be League of Leotards. So it kind of matches. What? Don't want to know. What? <laughs> So anyway, we're about an hour or so in. We're a little over an hour, I think. Hour and I'm a mistaken. half. Oh wow, already? Oh thirty, dude. <laughs> wow. We've been, dude. We've oh, we are. Been talking. <laughs> well, we're gonna try to speed it up because we have a quickie and a future discussion we want to have. And I do want to share some of the uh, deals with cheap bastards that I found. I don't know if Obi's found anything, but uh, you know, if if you do want to call in and join us for the remainder of the show, uh, as part of our kind of geeks engaged uh, pseudo segment. You know, give us uh you can call in our voicemail line 206-415-4987 or add the horseplay account or just look up horseplay live or add geeky at gmail.com and you can add our Skype account or just connect with me, Yogizilla, and I'll put you in the call. But we're gonna be talking about a hearthstone a little bit. We're gonna jump into our feature discussion about immersion versus reality. So uh on to the quickie. Uh so season one is here, and you know, Hearthstone's in full effect now. And um a lot of things going on. Uh, I wanted to share that there is going to be, uh, according to Hearth Hearthpone, there's going to be an iPad Media event for Hearthstone, and I believe it's set for April 8th. So as we thought, I'm thinking, pretty soon we're going to be enjoying the game while we're sitting on the can, because uh, that means the iPad release is right around the corner. Some people are saying PAX East is when it's going to be released. That could be, but it's going to be in April. I have a good feeling it's going to be in April. So stay tuned for that. But Obi and I have been playing a lot of Hearthstone. We've been streaming it. Make sure you check it out on our respective channels, Yogi Zilla and Obi One X Two. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much of it, but it was fun. I mean, we played with everything. We played Druid, we played Warrior, Shaman. Uh, oh, we played Paladin. If if you guys are looking at this, and for those that are not watching the live show and they're listening to the podcast, I'm pissed. Okay, I started playing this game long before him. Got into it, got the cards, got everything I needed to do. Well, guess what? We played approximately 10 games in the last days. I've lost nine. <laughs> I'm not, guys, yeah. I don't even, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I can't do it. And I'm sure Yogi's going to make a big, uh, maybe a video montage of me losing so many times. And some of the things I said were pretty, pretty, uh, um, I don't want to say disturbing because they were, but you guys, you guys wait, <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Hopefully, uh, Yogi will get it. Uh, get a, a little video made uh, of the our uh, epic times in Hearthstone. And of course, while we're playing, every time we got to make sure we tell him, Yogi. Guys, come on, you guys can join as well. 
we'll definitely play. Oh, yeah. Um, you want to get coins, of course. You know, of course. Again, if you guys do want to join for the rest of the rest of horseplay, you guys can go ahead and call in now. Uh, it is a Skype uh, right there on the on the screen there. Uh, it is uh, horseplay live on Skype. You guys go ahead and just add me, and we'll uh, get you right into the call. But other than that, we're just gonna talk a little bit about uh, uh, maybe a few voicemails. I think we want to do a few of those, and then we got a quickie, and then we're gonna get right into our feature of the evening. Uh, again, guys, if you guys do want to leave, leave us a voicemail, you guys can check out the gang hotline at 206-415-4987. I uh, hope to hear from you soon. When you guys do leave a message, we will play that, um, of course, in time, time pending, of course. Uh, if we have time on the show, we'll actually get that voicemail played. Yogi, do you have a, uh, a few voicemails that you want to, maybe, maybe one or two that you want to play? Not we got quite a few. Uh, what, how are we doing on time exactly? Because my timer got screwed up for some reason. Too bad. But uh, we started a little late. Yeah. I want to try to keep us a little uh, we're at, right we're, at a two two hour mark. We're right at one uh, one hour and thirty one minutes. Okay. Oof, man, longer than I thought. Yeah, I All right, so let's uh, let me get the voicemail going here. Hold on. Okay. Well, you're gonna get. So I'm going to mute the mic so we don't get the crazy echo. Well, while Yogi's getting that uh, pulled up there, we do want to say you guys can connect with Yogizilla and or me uh, to, again, play any games that we are playing currently. And um, basically, you guys can... Basically, we want to play. So anybody and everybody that wants to play. Um, of course, League of Legends is one of our big ones that we play with uh, a lot of the fans and whatnot, but we do have other games. So he is ready for uh, the first call. Um, here we go. And I have no idea what's going to happen, so let's go. I have to turn your Hi, mic. OV. Hi, Yogi. It's me, Normie477. I was calling to check in and see how you guys are doing tonight. I hope your show is doing great. As always, it does fantastic. So I'm sure it's going fine. It was really even silly of me to ask, right? Right. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great time. Yogi, have you joined any alliances yet on Marble Puzzle Quest? I'm just curious. Talk to you later. Bye. And, of course, you guys know her by uh, Normie. What up, all? 477. <laughs> Wait, you want to play another one real quick? Go ahead. You want to play another one? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll talk yeah, about them afterwards. Yeah, we'll talk about them afterwards. All right. Geeks and gamers, this is Obi-Wan X2. It is Tuesday. I don't know the date because I don't have a watch. All right, hey, guys. What's going on? This is Obi-Wan X2 here. And um, we just want to wish you guys, halfway throughout the week, uh, the best of luck in, uh, in all your video games and all your stuff. Uh, Shout-outs go out to Horseplay, of course, hashtag. Hashtag Nickelball Radio, you guys check that out. And, of course, guys, remember, we are on Stitcher. We are on iTunes. We are TuneIn Radio. And now, we'll see you guys on Thursday, gang. Peace. I want to talk about it. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Horse <laughs> play. I have a few questions for you guys. And I would also like to dedicate the song. You guys, I'm gonna skip that one because that one is gonna be a long one. We'll play that one next week because that my friend told me that he said on this one it's gonna be like four minutes long. So let's see the next one. And uh, derp, pity derp, derp. Who, who, who was that? Do you know? Is that all they said? Derpity derp, derp. Yeah, that's all I was said. There is caller ID on it, but I'm not gonna. I'm, I won't. I won't sell them out. But the one that's singing, we'll probably play on next week. It's uh from uh, the same guy that did a robot penis uh voicemail last week, episode fifteen. Got it. That's that's gonna be good. He's he usually calls when he's inebriated, which is fun. I know. But that's yeah, so Norm. Funny. But 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 Normie, yeah, she's always showing us love. Definitely appreciate that. 
And uh, I am on uh, Marvel Puzzle Quest on the Alliance, the B Team Alliance. Uh, I, I I'm actually in an alliance with her husband, and he's like super hardcore in the game. I'm I'm good at it, but he's like on a whole other level. Him and Chip are just they're killing people. They're taking like first place or at least top five in every event. It's ridiculous. I get like top fifty, top twenty sometimes, maybe top ten, but holy, that game is super competitive. But anyway. I think what we should do before we go into the feature discussion, uh, we'll skip the desktop this time. But I did want to do a quick indie watch, an indie alert, and uh, cheat deals for cheat bastard plug. First of all, for indie watch, uh, one of the games I've added to my radar is a JRPG made by Idea Factory and published by Ghost Light Limited. It's called Agarest Generations of War Zero. I'm not familiar with their previous games but this game looks beautiful if you like jrpgs and aren't like an elitist when it comes to graphics the style is really cool it's anime style graphics but um what really intrigues me about it uh besides it being a jrpg and i personally enjoy those kind of games um you know japanese rpg style game if, if you're not familiar with jrpg basically they're usually turn-based game the more traditional art role-playing like the original final fantasy and whatnot what really intrigues me about it is the core mechanics. You have a card-based skill system, and they have a thing called the Soul Breed system, which allows you to pick a bride and create generations of future warriors, kind of like a Rogue's Legacy a little bit. So that customization seems very strong in that game and very intriguing. So check it out. It's on Steam for pre-order right now, and I think it drops later in April. Agarest Generations of War Zero. And I think if you pre-order it, you get some other games and some, um, or you want, you unlock some additional content, uh, free DLCs and whatnot. So I might, I might be picking that up. But right now, they, it's originally $19.99, I believe, but they have for $14.99 right now if you pre-order it. So that's my pick for the Indie Watch. And as far as deals for Cheap Bass, I want to make sure everybody's aware that Midweek Madness is going on on Steam. And they're featuring the Dead Island series at uh, 75% off, if I'm not mistaken. And they have deals on Forced, which I'm not too familiar with, but looks interesting. Rise of the Triad, the remix, the remake, and some other games. And for free-to-play weekend on Steam this weekend, they're doing Monaco, which I happen to own thanks to uh, Soldierism, our former uh, co-host. And uh, they have it on sale for... For three dollars and seventy four cents, can't beat it for that price. It is super fun. It's a co op game, uh, part puzzle, part action kind of thing. Um, interesting graphic style. It takes a little getting used to, but it's it's funny as hell. So check out Monaco on Steam. Free to play this weekend. And remember the free to play weekends as always. They go from Friday through Sunday at one p.m. Pacific, four p.m. Eastern. That's the defi- that's the definitive cutoff, and they'll be free to play, and then. Uh, you'll see it pop up on your Steam, and then if you don't buy it by the time that's over, you, uh, it'll stay on there, but you won't be able to play it anymore, at least not for So I think we should do a Retro Friday, hashtag Retro Friday, and play some of these retro-style games, some classics, and maybe play some games together and or play games separately and stream them. So that's all I want to say on that. You ready for the feature discussion, uh, Obi? Definitely. All right. So today's feature discussion, I'm going to try to speed it up. Because we were hoping Stan Farina would join us for this discussion. We might have to revisit this so we don't go over time. But uh, we, were gonna t- we're, we have a discussion here about realism versus immersion. And we have two blog posts you should check out, especially the comments over at geekyantics.wordpress.com, which we will be getting a domain probably by the time the next show goes on. So make sure you are part of our Horseplay Steam community to so keep up with that and, and find out new information on that. But uh, on our blog, geekyantics.wordpress.com, we have two articles, one by Obi and one by me, about realism units and FPS games and realism versus immersion. And we also talk about virtual reality and other th- and some game mechanics and whatnot. But um, so, yeah, let's talk about the face of video games today. You know, the word realism really, I think, means something different to all gamers. So I, I think we should really just talk-, talk about the facets and tangents of realism. Uh, one of the first things here... Um, I think the biggest issue with realism is that people immediately think about graphics, right? Is that fair, you think, Obi? Yeah. So, you know, there's all this talk about HD graphics and frame rates, and now Ultra HD is becoming more standardized. We're going to see more of that. 
Uh, though we've been seeing that on the PC forever now, it's not a big deal. But you know, as far as consoles go, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of the talk. But I don't, you know, personally, I don't feel that graphics are necessary for realism or immersion. Um, they can enhance the experience, but it's not, it's not so much about the quality of the graphics rather than the graphical assets. And we talk about that in the article on uh, the Gigantic site. So I won't jump jump too that too deep into that, but uh, it brings us to the next an, another point: um, Can a game be too realistic, right? And and what do you think? Yeah, what do you think about that? Obi? you think that a game can be too realistic, as far not just the, the presentation, but like the actual game mechanics? Is there a point where it's too realistic where it's no longer fun? Um, I don't think it's going to be too realistic to where it's not going to be fun. I think it could be too realistic to the age required. Now, you've seen it as much as I have. Like, when World of Warcraft came out, they're like, okay, nobody under 16 is allowed to play this game, blah, 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 blah. But then <laughs> the first week or so that we had it in, there was eight-year-olds playing. Um, oh, yeah. And, and le- you know, putting it out on YouTube. I mean, it was just, you know, um, they were better than all the 20, 20 to 30-year-olds that were actually playing game now can the game to be too real i think a a a realism game or even a you know an fps first person shooter game yes it can be too real for the age um because really i know they're gonna see it at some point but does an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old need to see when they shoot somebody or even just shooting somebody when they shoot somebody a whole bunch of blood comes out do they really need to see that Nope. And that brings me back to the are HD graphics necessary? For me, yeah. Because <laughs> I want to be as is is real and as immersed as, as possible. Yes, realism and immersion is, is totally two different words. You know, um the, the the realism part of it is is we're we're what we are. We're a unit in the army, an actual real unit. We're actually a you know, we actually do things we don't use, you know, um you know, marine weapons. We don't use, you know, marine birds or, you know, helicopters, airplanes or anything like that. We are an army. Yes. Do I like that part? I love it. Do I like it when I can shoot a sniper rifle and it drops just like in real life? I love it. <laughs> Will I ever not play this game probably again? Providing if, if, if my computer doesn't stop wanting to run it? No. Unless we move to, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Arma 3 or something, but... I, I really don't think that it can be too realistic unless you're talking about an age group. Now, a question for you, Yogi. What, I mean, you kind of gave a, a somewhat of a, a meaning to the word realism. Now, what is immersion? What, I mean, what is it really? You. Well, before I get into that, I will say that I, I think as far as realism... And immersion alike, for me personally, I could I could suspend my disbelief and become immersed in the video game experience, regardless of the graphics, as long as the game mechanics are good. And if it comes to the the a point where the game mechanics and the fun, the fun quotient, as Gabe Zickerman would say are sacrificed for the HD graphics, then I'd rather have the, the game mechanics. I'd rather have the fun. Um, to me, realism is about creating uh, believability and, and having the mechanics that, that, that keep you hooked on the experience. So when you talk about immersion, really what you're talking about is being able to escape into a different reality Maybe to the point where you give up the reality as you know it and accept the virtual reality, the digital reality as 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 your own, you know, where d- during that experience, that might be as real to you or more real than anything that might be happening offline, you know, and I really believe that's possible. And with all the talk we've been discussing about the Oculus and all the virtual realities that we're doing now, uh, PlayStation uh, Sony's coming out with the uh, the Project Morpheus for the PlayStation 4. You know, they're trying to bring back virtual reality again. You know, it might improve realism 
I don't necessarily, it's not necessarily going to improve immersion because as we discuss on, on our site, on the, on the Geeky Antics Network site, the, the immersion can be disruptive, disrupt, disrupted by poor uh, storytelling or poor game mechanics. There's a lot of things that could take you out of that experience mm-hmm. or break the fourth wall where you realize the fourth wall is where you finally realize, oh, if that, if that fourth wall is broken, all, all of a sudden you realize you become self-aware or oh, I'm playing a video game and there's no real inherent incentive or value into this experience. I'm just doing it to kill time. That's the bad place to be. When you get into it, to me, to be fully immersed is to look in that game, play that game, and then be so into it that you just kind of forget about everything else while you're in it. You know, you're enjoying it. You're fully engrossed in it. You're immersed in the experience. And the highest level of immersion, it might be where the point at, at which you, when you're not playing the game, you're still thinking about it and talking about it with others. And that's how I define immersion. Um, there's a lot of facets to that. You know, uh, customization, uh, personalization, uh, which is an uh, extension of, of customization. Um, you know, the stickiness of the game. You know, if it keeps you coming back, if you feel like you really need to be committed to it, um, you know, all, there's so many different elements that within the scope of this because we probably can't cover it. But that's the way I define immersion. I mean, what does it mean to you, Obi? Um, well, just just putting yourself into that that reality. Uh, when I started, when I met my wife, and of course I was playing. For those that know me, I was playing WoW a lot, twelve hours a day, constantly leveling characters, PVP raids, everything, and well, the one thing that she's, you know, that I still love her for today for it, um, was she's like, you know, you can play however long you want as long as I get my time. You know, because really, when I'm on the game and I'm in a game, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not thinking about the fact that my house payment is due or my, you know, my, my truck payment's due or, you know, anything else. I'm immersing my total self, my whole mental everything into the game or into is you're just putting yourself into um the 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 game itself and not just sitting at a computer trying to live it now for those that actually get too immersed in it yeah i'm gonna ask that question here in a second when they get too immersed in it now those were the people that you you see that you know find to where yeah i lost my job because i play wow too much or i lost this because i you know that's getting to the point where it's not an immersion, it's an addiction. Um, and we could go over that fully. I mean, we could go over that over and over and over again. And it's basically going to be whose opinion sounds best, really. <laughs> you were talking about earlier, and it kind of leads us into the next question here, about the the, uh, the 3D, the virtual reality, even with the, the Oculus, um, and then some of the different things that you can use. For, for FPS is do do people really need the 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 3D and the the virtual reality? I mean, uh, that's the first question. I mean, do we really need it? No, I don't think so. I th- I don't think they might enhance realism, but I don't think they nec- there's a guarantee that they enhance immersion. You know, just because you put the blinders on. And all you see is the game doesn't mean that you're going to be immersed in the experience because there's a lot of, you know, game breaking uh, mechanics and and bugs and glitches and other things that could take you out of it. Right. And that being that being said, with with what, you you know, you can't really concentrate, you know, how does that impact the experience of of using the reality or goggles? I think we're just like in that cycle of time, like we've seen. Pretty much every decade, we've seen some kind of virtual reality headset, you know, some kind of uh, mind control aspect. I remember on the NES, they had a thing called a U-Force, and then they had a power glove. Uh, and then Nintendo came out with the Virtual Boy, and they've had virtual reality headsets that were just really monitors that, you know, put blinders on. And they've gotten way better now. Now the headsets actually um, have motion sensors, that so you can actually control where you're looking with your head. And that's cool, but... It, uh, to me, it's like connecting and everything else out there, the Wii Motes and all that stuff. You know, the the Wii U uh, tablet. It's just I think that it ha- adds a uh, new way to experience games, but it doesn't necessarily improve the immersion. It creates opportunities for improved immersion and improved reality, uh, realism rather. But 
I think that the problem is that people confuse realism and immersion a lot. Um, a lot of times when we say we want something that's more realistic, you know, what we're saying is that we want more, something more immersive. But if we had true realism, and I think Fort uh, mentioned this on, on the comments, if we had real, true realism and like, let's say, shooters, you know, FPS game is still very popular. They're probably some of the most play, played games out there. And there's tons of them. Um, if we had re true realism, I think people would not be playing them as much because it'd be frustrating. You know, one one shot, one kill, you get shot in the head, you're dead. None of this walking away from a headshot that you see in Halo and, and Call of Duty. You know, um, I remember on uh, Soldier of Fortune 2, it's Double Helix, I used to play on real damage servers. I'm taking it back. That was one of the first games I remember really getting into as far as shooters, and it had an infiltration mode. Hey, that game was dope. It was ahead of its time. It was, it was Call of Duty before we, Call of Duty was what it is now. And that game was awesome. But it, it was frustrating. You spent a lot of time just spectating if you died early. But there was no rushing in. You had to work as a team. It had to be very tactical, very deliberate. I was like, all right, we're going to cut across this building here, post up, and then survey the area. We'll, we'll send a recon unit out. All right, this unit will go out and try to flank from this direction and create a diversion. You know, we'll create a diversion with this group, and then they will try to flank them and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we'll use the leapfrog tactic and move forward and push the, the front line and all this stuff. And people get so so specific about it. And now we're moving away from it. It's more about arcade-style gameplay, more action-packed, and then no real teamwork and, and strategy, no real tactics. more like shoot your gun, kill things. Good luck. You know, and there's a lot of lone wolf kind of strategy. So I think where we're at with realism, especially in shooters, we're good on that. I don't think it need to be more realistic. I think it just needs to be more fun and more immersive so that you can't put it down. And then when you do put it down, you're thinking about it. Man, that was really fun because, you know, a lot of times realism to me is it, it goes coincides with tedious because they these the game developers work so hard to push uh, realism, but they forget about immersion and the things that make games fun. True, and and <clears throat> there's a couple of things that, um, and I I want to just 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 say this out. So there's a couple of the uh, the blog that I put out there. Um, now the, the 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 title the title of the blog was just realism in games. Uh, do real how real do shooters or the FPSs? Need? Um, now there is a quite a few responses to. What I what I've asked and and everything like that. The first one that I want you know realism is always a good thing in my mind. However, there are many bad things that can come along with it. One could either go both ways. If you had to pick a side, I would say that the with pro realism is his opinion. Um, the bad things and good things that he is suggesting is of course the realism, which is going to be a question here in the in a second. I'm kind of trying to tie these together for you, Yogi. So it sounds good. Um, but with the realism, I think that uh, he's, in his eyes, the pros heavily outweigh the cons. Yes, you're going to have, you know, are they old enough to see blood and guts splattered everywhere? Um, because it's not just blood and guts. That shit can get in kids' heads. You know, that's why we have people going up to a high school saying, you know, I don't care anymore and just freaking, you know, shooting 20 teachers and 30 students. Because they don't care. Because they seen this on video games that they got to play as kids, or, or their parents let them watch the blood gutty and you know gory movies. Not going on parenting advice, because. But how kids, what they see, what they hear, from the time that they are born, to the time that they get the hell out of your house, they're gonna remember that. Sorry to say it, they're gonna remember it somewhere. Maybe not as little much as when they're young, but. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, the 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 violence in video games is a whole other discussion, and it definitely is a, a facet of realism. But and I, I touched upon that in the article too. We just got up, uh, you know, just a few hours ago. But uh, not even a few hours, a couple hours ago, really. But um, you know, it, I, I think what happened with violence is that. I don't think the games the games maybe foster the violent the violent tendencies in, in, in the youth and anyone really. Um I, I think it brings out what's already there. But I think all of us, all human beings, have a visceral urge 
to just kind of like beat up someone, you know, and just seek blood. And in a video game, you could do without feeling guilty, you know, because you're not just going to walk down the street unless you're stupid, you know, some stupid fool and punch someone randomly just because you're having a bad day. But in a game, you could do that. And it's all right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the as far as that goes, uh, uh, again, um, I, I think what happened with developers, they see violence as an easy opportunity because the one thing that everybody can uh, respond to, can, can relate to, to some degree. Whereas, you know, something like a TCG, I have a lot of friends that they they say, hey, you're having lots of fun with that. I'm hearing lots of good things, but I can't play it because there's no real action. No, I don't see any monsters fighting each other. It's just a bunch of cards slapping each other, and it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, well, imagine it in your head. We'll pretend it's a book. It's like, yeah, but it's a video game. It should have nice animations and epic battles. I don't want to throw cards down and watch them hit each other. You know, it's and and it's understandable. But I think uh, you know we complain about violence in video games as parents or just as you know conscious gamers. But then uh, we still, you know, we buckle under the pressure and we play them. But, uh, you know, another thing, too, that's, that's worth noting is that um, immersion is also, it, it goes hand in hand with stickiness. And stickiness refers to how, um, how much, uh, how committed we feel to content. So if something's really sticky, we want to come keep coming back to it. Um, but the immersion is more about the experience once you're actually there. And, and how engrossed you are in it, right? Like a game you could play while you're multitasking probably isn't very immersive. You might really enjoy it. It might be fun, but you're not deeply engrossed in it. You're not getting completely, dis you're not completely disappearing while you're doing it. And then, you know, while you, if you're doing Twitch stream, that's a whole different thing because you, you have to make a concerted effort to engage with the community. That's a whole different topic. But, you know, a lot of times in games, what you see to make things sticky is they do stupid things like come back every hour so your all your stuff, your stamina will replenish, or your your vegetables will be ready to be picked, or uh, you'll have another reward waiting for you if you log in once daily. You know, stuff like that. Those are things they do to force stickiness and keep people hooked on the experience. But it needs to be. It all comes back to the core mechanics, and I think that's where game designers are missing the mark. Make the games fun. It's very simple. Make the games fun. And, and make sure that you have a good balance between and reward. So if level of realism more tedious, there better a degree of frequency of rewards. Um, and part of that reward is the engagement, the community interaction layer, where you're you know something with your friends, uh, in-game stuff where you, new loot, new equipment, skins, whatever. What happened, Ovi? Ah, uh, you're Look you're perplexed. bugging out a little bit, but um, but no, um, it it kind of it you're bugging out a little bit, so I'm just gonna talk for a second. Um, but it all kinds of kind of dials into it with why they make realism games. Um, because mostly, if you think about it, Yogi, and I know you 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 see what I'm talking about right here. Um, I didn't do it, but basically, we what the question is 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 realism primarily defined. Um, it is. It's primarily defined by visualizations and violence. It, if there's, you know, a lot of explosions, the 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 physical violence where you can come up and stab somebody in the back of the neck, or you know, come running down a lane, and you're in a, you're in your your speed, you know, set up, and you come down and just knife people as you run by. Is that really realism? No, not really, because really, how how real is it that you can run that fast for that long? Yeah. And knife somebody, you know, that is not real at all. Now, when we talk about, you know, realism, I'm talking about, you know, the more of the, not necessarily the first person shooters because I'm, I've am i played all the first person shooters, Black Ops, Battlefield, and they're not as real as some of the, the other realism. I'm going to say it, but like Arma. Battlefield 4 is to a point. But a lot of the the weapons they don't work like they're supposed to, you know. Um, a tank can shoot, you know, fifty miles and not drop a not drop a centimeter. No, um, or the tank can't shoot, but like three thousand meters and that's it when it's supposed to do ten thousand. You know, just things like that. That just if you're looking for those realism games that you can immerse yourself into. I mean, you're gonna want to find something that actually has structure into it that somebody else has actually set up or set aside, such as a, a you know a military unit. 
you know, even if it's a, um, uh, throw it out there, a Magic the Gathering plan. That's all I do is they play Magic the Gathering and they get together once a month and do a live role play or something like that. You know, or something of that effect. I mean, yes, that is realism too, just on a different spectrum. We can talk about this all night and I'm not going to because Yogi's got something he wants to say and I know he does. I do. Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting some crazy lag, and I, I, I want to keep us under two hours today so we could uh, get the show prepped to the upload. Right, I mean, I, yeah, hours. we could definitely talk about this forever, but if you want to keep the conversation going, make sure you go to our blog at uh, geekyantics.wordpress.com and, and check out the articles and comment. Uh, call in via voicemail, 206-415-497. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could talk about in here, but I think the biggest takeaway I wanted to kind of hone in on was the fact that you know, people confuse realism and immersion. And on top of that, I think the the value of graphics is overstated. Like, uh, people need to stop uh, judging games by frame rate and resolution. It's nice to think about, but I think we're at a point where even if we get those technological improvements soon, it's not gonna in, it's not gonna improve the game experience unless the other things, the underlying issues, the core mechanics of the games are really um, done right. And that's where they need to be focusing on. So developers shouldn't be asking themselves, uh, they shouldn't be pursuing realism, they should be pursuing immersion and going back to the roots, making games fun, you know? Because it, it, I, I, you know, when it comes to shooters, you know, I'm very tempted to get back into Arma 2 and, and I love realistic shooters. But when it, there are some that get so tedious that it's like, all right, let's walk slowly. And then it's like, all right, we can't just jump in because they have far more range. They have artillery. And it's like, whoa, it's a drag. Like, it's cool. But, like, I think sometimes you have to draw a line and say, all right, this is a video game. It's going to make some concessions. It's not going to be 100% accurate because if you do all those things accurately, it won't be fun. It's like Titanfall. You know, in Titanfall, they do, do these ridiculous things like a foot soldier is taking out a mech, which sounds stupid. You know, and, and people could easily jump up onto the mechs and, and take them over, commandeer them or whatever. Um, and it's like, uh, this was a real, I mean, not the mechs are a real thing, but if you try to, you know, put in perspective and think about sci-fi and there should be some kind of rules in, in, in place, it's not very plausible. That's the bigger aspect of realism is whether something is believable, where you could really just say, all right, I know this is not real, but I could believe it. So that makes it realistic right now. Because in the, people focus on the aspect of realism, where it's like it needs to mimic our, our world as we know it 100%. And I don't think that's why people are reading books or playing video games or anything. So really, most of us just want an escape from reality. And if that's to a different reality that we could adopt for that brief amount of time or longer period of time, whatever it is, that we're enjoying that experience, then cool. It doesn't need to be a complete, you know, copy, a, a carbon copy of our world. Right. And, 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 I mean, we can go about, like you said, we can go about this all day long. Yes, a foot soldier is not supposed to be able to take over a mech. I'm sorry. Um, it's, I mean, it's a machine. You know, one time to where if you do this, fast, okay, you're what going to do one of two things. You're either going to hurt the person that you hit or hurt yourself. A mech does this really fast, the bitch is dead. I mean, it's just little things like that that, you know, of course, like you said, it's you can make anything uh, into realism. You can make anything. Actually, submerge yourself into it. Um, but if you guys did uh, enjoy the conversation so far, I don't think we're going to be done with this yet. Uh, keep Go ahead and join us right there on um, the geekantics.wordpress.com and check that out. We do have both, um, and I'll give you the, yeah, one is realism units in FPS games, and one is realism versus immersion in video games. So you guys go check that out. Leave a post. Uh, we'll read somewhere out next week or whenever we pick this back up. But we do want to make sure that you guys do know that if you did miss Horseplay, here we are on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, BlackBerry, Windows slash Zune. If you guys don't know what that is, that's for the Xbox uh, or Microsoft. And iTunes. You guys can leave us some reviews on iTunes. would be awesome. We really would appreciate those. And believe it or not, those reviews on iTunes help us out more than you think. Give us a good, uh, even if it's a little bit of a, you know, uh, what we need to do better, let us know so we can change it. We do want to let you guys know you guys can leave us a voicemail at 206-415-4987.
right there above Yogi's head, 206-415-4987. Check us out. Leave <laughs> oh, they're saying they can't hear you on the stream. I don't know. I hear you fine. Unless you're uh, muted yourself on uh, OBS. <laughs> Something funky happened. So anyway, so while Obi's uh, figuring out his situation, uh, where we're at, uh, yeah, so we have highlights vid highlight, highlight videos and audio casts. Uh, the audio casts are horseplay uncut, and the highlight video, the actual videos are horseplay HD uh, over on my channel, Yogizilla, on YouTube. And on Twitch, uh, Obi also has uh, highlights on his channel, Obi1X2. And uh, yeah, some shout outs to our friends uh, in the podcasting and blogging mm -hmm. world, Gaming History mm -hmm. 101, Sega Nerds, The Gaming of the Shrew, formerly the Sega Addicts, Casturbers, Doctor Who podcast, and I still have to get out a Doctor Who uh, article soon, so that we'll be coming to the blog, stay tuned for that. Origin Lounge Radio, and also uh, Bobby Blackwolf. Uh, it's a good show, too. There's a lot of them, but I'm uh, just trying to mention a few of our friends over different places. R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, Zombie Cast, Agents of Shield Cast, and the B Team Podcast, which most of, most of these are at allgames.com, uh, over at their network, mm -hmm. and on Stitcher. And also, tons of great blogs that uh, we have been plugging over at the gang site, including some stuff from Zombie Cast, uh, Game Theory Podcast, Zombie, uh, Zombie Blog, Casturbaris. Knuckleballer, B Team. We've done a little bit of everything. Gaming History 101. We've shared a lot of their stuff. Just spreading the love. And we've seen a huge response from zombie and um, gaming crime related content and, and the talks about realism and immersion. So uh, people seem to really get game mechanics and want to talk more about the inner workings of video games. So we'll, do, we'll be doing more of that. And, um, you know, in future episodes, you know, now that Walking Dead is over, we'll be focusing, as far as shows go, we'll be talking more about Mar Marvel Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., which has a a few episodes left. Uh, Arrow, Game of Thrones coming back, so that's good. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. And Yogi's and Obi, gonna be you giving have, out. Uh, out now. Yogi's gonna be giving out some, uh, or not giving out, but he's gonna be watching Doctor Who as well. Yes, Probably gonna be talking about that. You guys can hear me now. Like, yeah, he doesn't seem to hear you. That. Okay. Unfortunately, with Doctor Who, I have to wait till like. Uh, the summer or I think fall for it to come back. So that's kind of a drag. Well, whatever it? it is, it's a drag. Whatever we do. How it is. <laughs> that's I a positive that's a good positive thought to end on. Everything we do is a drag. See you next week. No. Hey guys, we I really I did want to say one last thing that, uh, that I think is also worth mentioning as far as realism and immersion goes. The notion of breaking the fourth wall. Uh, check that out in the article. It's a particularly important, uh, poignant, I guess you say, uh, uh, point because the, the the fourth wall when when uh, developers break that fourth wall through a lot of annoying tropes in video games, it it ruins the experience as well. It it could ruin realism and immersion alike. And a good example are besides glitches and bugs are things like uh, tutorials. When, where they call out to the player and say press start, that ruins the experience. And I was like, oh, press X to do this. It's like, ugh. And you got to read that part because there's a lot of things that's like you think about it. You may not be aware of it per se, but you, when you start to think about it, it's like, yeah, that does take me out of the experience because then I realize it's just a stupid game and I'm like, screw you, man. <laughs> I say that all the time too. 
I usually get yelled at. No, fuck you. You guys, we really want to appreciate you guys that have uh, listened and stuck through the rest of the show. This is Obi Wan X2 along with Yogi Zilla right here. This yep, is yep. Horseplay. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Holla at your boy. Voicemail. And one last thing before you guys go, before we go, make sure you guys leave us a voicemail at 206 415 4987. That's 206 495. I'm saying the wrong number. 206 415 4987. There you go. Well, We'll insert uh, a subliminal message into the music. And we'll put foot in my mouth now. Delicious. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Leave us voicemail. Leave us voicemail. 206 415 4987. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it.